Rays are beautiful creatures. Like sharks, they are elasmobronchs. They have cartilaginous skeletons. One very interesting aspect of the eyes of some rays is a flap of sorts that comes down over their pupil in bright light, you can, as you can see by the red arrow there. Now here's a front view of a typical eye of a bony fish, in this case an angelfish. You'll notice that like most bony fishes, the pupil is relatively round with a little notch in the pupil, the aphic space that we discussed in the earlier trumpet fish eye video. The pupil does not change much at all in shape. Now this is a super macro side view shot of a scorpion fish eye and another bony fish and this shows the large spherical lens, the red arrows, protruding through the pupil which is the central opening in the striped iris, the green arrows. And this makes the pupil large and round and somewhat difficult to change shape. Not the ray though. Now my dive buddy got an image of me swimming alongside of a ray on a recent dive trip in the Florida Keys. We kind of watched it swimming around for a while and it eventually settled down in the sandy seafloor. I then slowly approached it and I eventually got quite close and obtained a macro shot of its eye and pupil. This is the best shot I got. You can see that the ray's pupil is much different than the rounded pupil of bony fishes. Here you will notice a flap coming from the upper part of the iris coming down over the pupil like a window shade. Now when shooting super macro images of eyes, you need to be very close to the subject and it's helpful to choose First of all, a dive site that doesn't have too much current or surge, and it also helps if you are somewhat shallow. That way you have plenty of time for a slow approach and can pay attention to your photography and not be too distracted with your depth, remaining air supply, location of your dive buddy, etc. But then you must find a subject that has the potential to be still and is also approachable and, and can also be approached with minimal damage to the reef. Now once the subject is spotted, initially I ignore the subject and I take patient, uh, pictures of an adjacent rock or coral and I check my LCD and histogram information. And then I'll back off when I adjust my strobe position or camera settings so as not to frighten the subject. Eventually though, the subject will hopefully accept my presence. I then continue to approach very slowly, every so often taking a picture, but I back off slowly if I want to check my LCD or histogram or make any further adjustments. So again, I don't uh, frighten the subject. And finally, when I depart, I do it slowly. I try not to even startle the fish or stir up a lot of cinnamon when I leave either. Now here is a super macro shot I got after a very patient and slow approach. It's with a um, 60 diopter macro lens with a plus 10 diopter wet lens flipped on top of it. Now this flap over the fish's eye, it can be helpful in several ways, okay? Now this flap can first of all limit light on a bright sunny day on the reef, kind of like a sunshade. Also, the slit-like pupil can improve focus by reducing various optical aberrations. And thirdly, a round black pupil can be obvious to predators or prey. All right, and this flap can help provide some camouflage for the fish. Now here's a shot taken in dark conditions when the flap has retracted upward. And it does this to allow more light into the eye on a dark, in darker conditions. Here you can see the flap, but it's much smaller, only at the top of the otherwise black and rounded pupil. Here's a side view shot. You can see the cornea and the red arrow is pointing to the flap. And you can see how this pupillary flap is actually an extension of the upper iris. You can see how it comes down over the pupil like a sunshine, like a sunshade. Very cool. This is my favorite and luckiest super macro shot of the pupil of a ray. This shows only the central part of its eye, the pupil, which is almost completely covered, okay, by the flap. This ray was in fairly shallow water and it was a bright sunny day. Amazing, I love that shot. So the next time you're photographing a portrait or macro shot of a yellow ray or a southern stingray, don't forget to check out its perplexing but amazing pupil. Oh.
Well, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you very much for your attention, and I always welcome any feedback.